What's up dudes? Uh, in my last video we made this cool CSS nav in our Black Ops gaming website and I'm gonna spice it up a little bit using some uh, cool C cool web fonts and uh, CSS sprites and if you don't know what that is just fast forward through the video to the end and you'll see what that looks like. Um, for a basic template here this should be your te basic template every time you make a website we have a wrapper here, our content div, and for this video in our content div we have this nav, which is this. And inside our nav we have some LIs. Uh, we got an active nav for whatever one's active on the current page, and inside the LIs we got some basic anchors. That's your basic nav there. And for our template CSS, uh, we got the body wrapper. This is the nav that I currently have. Uh, if you want to make it just like this, copy that right now. And I add some footer, text and links. I'm not even using this stuff, so it's not necessary for this video. And first off, we're going to get an awesome... Oh, well, I'll show you how this is working. If you didn't watch the last video. So... On this basic nav here, this is optional, I have a padding, but you want list style type none. Uh, you want these LIs to float left, because without that, you'll get something like this. Uh, we're looking for that. And uh, on our anchors inside of our LI, you want some padding and make sure that's a display block. Because without that, they're all humping against each other. Give some uh, space in between there. And we got a hover effect, background color, and a color. And our active tab is the same thing as our hover. So, do you guys know how the code's work in? We're going to embed a custom font that works on every browser. So instead of in, in Photoshop, you'd actually cut out uh, using some shitty font font in Photoshop you'd actually have to cut out individual images. Uh, we're just going to use raw text, it's way more professional. We're going to go to fontscroll.com. Uh, this is my favorite site. It has a bunch of fonts that you can use through the internet. And we're going to go to the most downloaded and we're just going to download the most popular one here. And you want the F off face kit on top here and you want all four of these checked so it works in every browser the EOT works for Internet Explorer this works for like every other browser for your iPhone, iPad, yeah we're just going to download all of it download guide to your desktop uh, so here's our folder that we just downloaded called good dog and here's our site folder that has our index HTML and from our pre previous uh, videos I have so in here I have a font um, I'm just gonna delete this and do it again we're gonna make a fonts folder inside of our site folder and we're just gonna copy all these images for our fonts and you have to agree to this license agreement here, fair use, and yeah, and it gives you a demo on how to use it. But we're going to use this style sheet CSS, and we're just going to copy everything that they give us here. I'll copy this too. And we're going to place it all the way at the bottom, anywhere you want, but I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom here. Cool. Um, so we're going to X out of that. Now in our site folder, we have our fonts. We have all of our fonts lined up in here. And in our CSS, we changed the location of these. So we need to get out of our CSS folder into our fonts folder over here. So we're going to do dot dot slash fonts. And we're just going to copy that right there. 
and do that for each of these URLs here. Cool. Now your CSS knows where the font is, and this is called Good Dog Regular. So I'm just going to copy that. And for our nav here, we're going to use a font family of Good Dog Regular. And let's see what that gives us. Alright, cool. Uh, by default, that font's really small. Let's make it bigger. Uh, 3.5. Cool. And that's how you use a basic font. This is raw text here. You can tell it's text because when you highlight over it, you can tell it's text and not a picture. Um, now we're going to do some CSS sprites. So maybe instead of this boring background of just one solid color, we're going to do a picture. So we're going to come here in Photoshop. Um, we'll give it a width of... Looks about right. So for each time you hover over these pictures, this is a little bit bigger and wider, but that's okay for this project that we're using it for. Uh, we're going to have four different hovers here. So when you hover over it, you'll get a different picture. When you click down on it, the active state, that will have a different picture. And the act currently active, so we have two actives here. So we're going to do canvas size, and we're going to make this height 400. We're going to times that by 4 because we're going to have four different pictures. Okay. We're going to select our uh, rectangular marquee tool, and we're going to do a fixed size of 200 by 100 up here. And just select on your page here, make a new layer, and fill that in. Uh, for me it's alt backspace. That's a shortcut key. And then uh, to deselect off this, you just press uh, option D or command D, deselect. And then we're going to command J, copy and paste this same image over and over. And line them all up. Or if you don't know the shortcut, just right click on it. You can duplicate layer. Sure. Um, we're going to make all these 50% or 40%, whatever. All these black layers that we just made. All right. And on our background, double click on it. Uh, we're actually just going to delete that. Make a new layer. Put it all at the bottom here. And we're going to find a texture background on the internet. I already found mine, so I'm just going to use this paper texture that I have here. Drag that over. I'm going to hide all these layers real quick. Uh, that looks pretty good, I guess. We're going to image adjustments, make this black and white. And then we're going to give each one of these a color overlay. I'm just going to do the same color that we have right now. This green thing. So... I'll brighten that up a little bit. 50%. And then on this layer, we'll do another color overlay. Um, that looks pretty cool, actually. Keep that. That was red. And do another color overlay. Change this red to, uh, I don't know, orange. Brighten that up, the opacity. And the very last one here, I'll do a color overlay of blue. I 
Awesome. Now we're going to save this as a CSS sprite. So I'm just going to... I did the shortcut. Uh, save for web and devices. And we want to save it as a JPEG. Um, we'll lower the quality here. Something smaller. Uh, 10K is pretty small. And we'll give this a uh, called nav spray. Dot JPEG. And we'll minimize this here. And on our A's here, we're going to give it a background URL dot dot slash to go into our images folder. And we're going to grab that image that we just created. So our nav sprite dot JPEG. And we're going to give it background position of zero zero. And let's see what that gives us. Okay. So we got part of our sprite work in here. Our very top right, very top is green. So if we want to get to the red or the orange or the blue, we just change the background position. So I'm going to get rid of these background colors. Those aren't needed. So for our hover state, we can it inherits this hover state inherits this background so we don't have to include this background every time so all we have to do is say background image no background position and we can change the position of this background so this image right here is 200 by 400 each one of these are 100 pixels 100 100 100 100 100 to go down here, uh, we our first one is the width, so we're not changing the width. We want to change the height, so we'll say negative 100 pixels. So when we hover, we'll get this red. So we want down negative 100. So if we wanted to get the orange, we'd say down negative 200. So for our active here, we'll have the background. Um, position zero is the width, and then we'll have say negative 200 pixels. So that's our uh, active right there, and then maybe we'll have a. I'll copy and paste this. And instead of hover, we'll have active, and we'll say negative 300. So, whenever you click the mouse down, it'll change colors. So when I click on this link, cool, huh? Um, maybe I'd change the color of this active, just white. I'll just leave it all white. So we have this A, and we're giving it a background color, and we're using just zero zero. This is probably, you can probably just put that by default and it'd still be the same, okay? So we're just giving it a background. And then on the hover, we're going to back composition of negative 100, negative 100, negative 200, negative 300 for an active anchor and an active page that we're on. So there you go.